So see, here we are at uh, ESETI. It is August 11th, right? Or is it? Yeah, it's August 11th, August 12th. 12th, I'd say. August yeah. 12th, 2011. And uh, we're here for uh, to see George do a workshop all weekend. Yeah. George, you got here a couple days ago. What do you think about ESETI so far? Oh, loving it. Uh, feel very comfortable here. Uh, very relaxed, very soothing, and uh, it's it's a good show up there during yeah. the night as well. So moon's pretty moon's pretty bright right now. The the ones that we're going to be able to see are going to have to be the bright ones. Oh, they are. And, uh, yeah, they're going to have to be good ones. They will be. Yeah, isn't Thank it you. amazing how bright the moon is too? Like, oh, I know. When I was a child, it was never that bright. Yeah, it didn't <laughs> seem that way, did it? It's like daylight now. It just lights the whole place up. Yeah, it's crazy. And so, had any experiences here that you'd like to talk about so far? Oh, a couple. Uh, I did meet with a, line, uh, a fear line being from Cirrus, uh, so that was nice. We had a nice exchange. There was that familiar, familiar energy there of the Cirrus system. Yeah. Um, and then I had a bit of a lie down before, and there was quite a few other beings that turned up. Uh, I'm not really sure exactly where they're from, but they had different appearances. One was almost grade-like. Uh, but didn't feel any negativity from it. Right. And so, yeah, had some nice experiences meeting some fantastic people. And just, you come across people and they just have a familiar energy to them. So it's like you know, a, bit of, a bit of soul family thing going on there. I've met you before. Yeah. <laughs> I know you. Yeah, I, don't I know you from yeah. somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> we, we've, we have done this so a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, Everybody's saying after this one, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, we got some amazing energies happening in the world right now. Yeah. So, uh, so what do you think about all the turmoil that's going on over in Europe right now? The the London stuff and what's what's a, is there a a vibrational parallel there somewhere? Yeah, well, the infrastructure is breaking down. I find it fascinating how they had issues in Spain. They've had issues in Greece. You know, um, for Spain, you know, it's got to do with the Inquisition structure. Um, right. But th these systems are all now dismantling. Uh, for Greece, you know, the birthplace of so-called democracy. Hmm. So that uh, passive-aggressive control system that we've had called democracy is now in the process of uh, dismantling as well. So, it, it, and it's kind of having a ripple effect uh, around the world. And you've got the thing going on in Cairo as well. So a lot of the, um, you know, the... Well, I would say the ancient priesthood structures from, from mm -hmm. those epochs and those eras are, uh, are dismantling as well. And we're, we're all helping to bring about that oh, yeah. deconstructive side of the process as well as the recreation of the new way of life. Yeah, you have to clear the board to make way for something new, don't you? Yeah, you do. I, I give an analogy as you want, you want to renovate your bathroom. You want a new bathroom, well, you've got to take the whole old one apart uh, before you can actually move in there and and build a whole new one, so this whole reality has to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm kind of excited about that. I am too. Thank I you. still look around and I go, nah. Really? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> yeah. But it just, I, every time I feel deeper into my heart and into Mother Earth, I still get the same thing. Yeah. yeah. If I get change, I get a lot of change coming, mm. a, lot, a lot of change coming here in the near future. Mm. So, uh, so we, we are the 100th monkey here, and I think we talked briefly about this uh, in our last interview. Uh, the 100th monkey effect. Uh, yeah. Where are we with that, George? Oh, 99.9? <laughs> 99.9, <laughs> huh? I'd say we're at the 99th monkey. I'd say pretty close to it, yeah. yeah I wonder what that, I, I just, just asked myself what that's going to look like when that 100th monkey actually climbs on the board. The 100th monkey effect, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Technically speaking, okay, if you really, really feel into it, it could be around the 92 or 93 mark. But we're getting right up there. Um, there's there's a large percentage of people who, even I've got friends and family who were just really just like that for so long, and now all of a sudden they're just their paradigm is now blown wide open. Um, and it's interesting because there's another effect going on. There are some people who are actually going deeper into that trance, mm -hmm. and they're. So there's that separation that's happening, you know, right. between peoples. Right, you're definitely seeing that. Yeah. Well, I kind of see the ones that, that go that way, though. I think it's, it's, they have to do that. It's something they need to do. It's an experience they need to have oh, to sure. complete their package, you know. Yeah, it is. 
we see we've already done those other right. paths. We've been there. And we've done that, and uh, we're we're exiting now out of this arena, this part of the universe, because um, we've pretty much accomplished everything we wanted to do, and uh, and we're popping out, and they still need to continue their experiences here. So they'll they'll just pop out whenever they're ready. Here or elsewhere. Yeah. There's a, there's a vast uh, arena out there for for uh, opportunities for experience. Yeah. 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 I love that. I love that aspect. Yeah. I mean, uh, infinity. You know, we have we have infinite possibilities of where and what we can do. Yeah. I just absolutely love that. Yeah. So, uh, I had somebody ask ask me earlier uh, about reincarnation. Yeah. What do you feel about reincarnation? What, what, what? Um... Well, it's been an essential part of our learning in the Earth paradigm, the Earth arena. So, um, Earth's all about being the microcosm of the macrocosm. So, you come here to experience the universe in a very compressed and uh, state, very intense way, and it's all about uh, achieving balance in our souls. So, uh, there are some people who who didn't need as many. Uh, journeys here as others. Um, I've had a few and uh, There's other people that have been reincarnating over and over and over again and some people actually caught up in a, in a uh, An energetic loop to do with uh, a demigod who keeps putting them back here to, to feed off them So there's, there's more than one thing going on. There are some people that are caught up in these limited paradigms of awareness mm -hmm. and uh, and have given themselves over as a resource um, in that way to these entities and uh, they're the ones that once they um, have their lives here they're then put before a judgment panel and the throne of God and they get you know whether they're being good or bad right. and the people that experience that they're the ones that are caught up in that feed loop right and they just keep being refed down into this um, place here so they can continue to be fed off so that's their experience uh, for many others when they actually uh, pass through there's none of that judgment stuff goes on at all it's just yeah, it's only kind of, for a select few that they experience that. Kind of depends on where that person is with their awareness. Mm. That, what what are they able to or willing to accept yeah. when they take that step beyond? You know, if they have, if the the paradigm of the the religious Judeo Christian paradigm has mm. been Im, embedded within them, they have to go through the Saint Peter and the Pearly Gates syndrome. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas uh, people who have a little bit broader or more, uh, what I would term more open mind, which is probably not really accurate stating it that way, but uh, have uh, limitless possibilities of creating their own uh, yeah. vista to experience. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a good way of putting it, Tom. Yeah. yeah. I think I like the. Uh, uh, I like your ideas about us being the compression of a galactic consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, I've. Actually, one of the first uh, visual uh, uh, visions that I had, mystical type visions that I had, was a vision of a star field of an infinity where I, I entered into, a, I, I had the whole, solar, the whole galaxy uh, vista in front of me and I traveled and entered one of the stars which exploded out into the whole infinite wow. uh, universe again and yep. then I picked a star and traveled into it which exploded into yep. the same so I saw a, the infinity of mm. going through that that opened up an infinite possibilities of infinite different dimensions and and yeah. uh, it, it, it was it was quite a point for me to uh, open my eyes and give me a knowing of the the infinity of life how vast it is the, mag oh. the magnitude of how big the place is yeah. it's colossal it's just colossal it's colossal and it's minute yeah i mean because it's all uh, you infinity goes both directions you it know does, yeah it goes both directions that's that was one it took me quite a while to wrap my mind around that one uh, that it actually infinity you can go infinite small and uh, it's just as large as infinite large <laughs> Kind of uh, definitely a, it does your head in a bit yeah but that's what it's meant to do because these are concepts that are beyond the mind anyway so that's right it does your head in that way and some people can't grasp the concept of they've always existed right they, they always got to think like they're born or spawned out of some some sort of construct something that's greater than they are and 
truth is we always have been and we always will be. So our essence is eternal and infinite. Yeah. yeah. Getting that, getting people to understand that is is a challenge at times. Yeah. But I think that's what what people like you and James and all the guy people that come here and speak and mm -hmm. and what all the people that are doing radio show shows and and stuff yeah. like that. That's what we're doing is we're actually out there poking people and uh, and spreading the vibration and mm. uh, opening eyes uh, through that vibration. We're we're putting it out there and. Uh, it can't they can't help but be affected by it in some manner to help progress help them to progress especially at this time right now the energies are getting so intense and so high yeah, that uh, as we do go out and we start affecting those around us uh it's it's shaking up their uh their blockages the things that have been keeping them away from understanding <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. it shakes and rattles and and loosens all those blocks up so that it gives them the opportunity to actually consciously remove them yeah so that's yeah. one that's something that i really have to commend you on uh the work that you've been doing for spreading that vibration and, and sparking the fire of vibration within so many others thanks tom i appreciate that just providing triggers that's all we're doing that's it yeah that's it just so people can empower themselves from from within and have their own understanding their own awareness occur for themselves and that's just so important that that happens and that people don't become followers because I don't know about anybody else but I'm done being a resource mm -hmm. and uh, and I hope they can look at it from that point of view if they want to continue to be a resource for others or even to the point of do they see themselves as continuing the need to be a student right. so you know we've we've done everything that this construct of light has to offer and we know that we are no longer students of that construct that we are now the masters of that construct and it's not an ego thing it's just that we've had a very long and arduous journey in this universe and we know where we've been, we know what we've done, we know what we've accomplished and we're right at the very end of that. And so, for, you know, for some people, if they um, see themselves as still still a student and of life and still learning in that regard, then, uh, you know, they've still got more journeys to have in this part of the universe. But, you know, people just need to ask themselves um, and from a non-egotistical perspective, you know, like really genuinely feel within themselves you know uh, are they a master or are they a student right how do they feel about that and whatever c comes up within them that's all right you know just some people feel like they're masters and some people feel like they're students and um it's not a segregation thing for elitism or anything like that uh, it's just that um again it's reaching the end of that really long journey in this universe of uh exhausting all possibilities and outcomes and exploring all the all the learning that there is to be learned through this construct we call light. Yeah. You know, and we're done. We're tired. We're done. <laughs> it's been a long journey. And uh, we're really looking forward to the next couple of years so we can uh, uh, really achieve, accomplish our intended outcome. There's a, there's a, a definite spirit of support that uh, I have experienced myself and so many others that I've talked to have been experienced. The intensification of that divine guidance and that divine support yeah. Uh, that reassurance that uh, there are beings out there that are are intentionally and very specifically guarding out just for you, mm. just for you. You have your help. Everyone's got a whole entourage. Absolutely. Around them. Yeah. Absolutely. Do. Yeah. The, the 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 thing is, there's also beings that want to um, create a dependency too. So you got to look out for those ones. Because right. uh, you've got an entourage of all sorts of beings around you and they both play these really important roles and some will step back and allow others to come in and if someone's being too negative then another one will step in and, and balance out that negativity. So there's real interesting energetic byplay that goes on around each and every incarnational construct here on the planet. I use a, a, a form of self-kinesiology where I listen to my body mm. and I sense, I keep my, I open my awareness to what exactly my whole body is feeling. Yeah. Uh, and especially when I'm interacting with a new uh, vibration or a new entity, mm. when I interact with that, I, I make sure that I have all my senses wide open mm. and I listen to my body. My body will give me the signs and tell me whether this is good for me or bad for me, it's, it it's, uh, trust yeah. your feelings. Yeah, trust your feelings. And, uh, it's so important to do that, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it is. It is. But we, we, each one of us has all the tools that we need. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We just got to start trusting in ourselves. And if people do that and they find themselves 
you know, making the odd wrong decision or trusting in something that doesn't work out. It's kind of like riding a bike, I say. You, you have a bit of a fall, what are you going to do? Just walk away and, and, and be in fear of that from then on? Or are you going to get back on the bike and have another go? So even if you do make a few mistakes along the way, keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. Keep trusting what you're getting. Keep, keep trusting that intuitive, deep intuitive heart and those deep, graceful, they're real subtle feelings. So, the ones that are giving you the messages are very deep and very subtle and very gentle. If you if you want something up in lights, then you're just not getting it. You, you're missing the point. And so they're very soft and, uh, and subtle. And just keep at it. And eventually you're going to you know, really get to a really good place within yourself. Once, once you really start being able to recognize that subtle voice and uh, yeah. once you're able to identify it within yourself, it becomes so much easier yeah. to access and uh, uh, the trust grows. Yeah. The uh, the knowing grows. Yeah. Yeah. And that and that strong feeling of centeredness, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You get, you get that real solid. There's a solid foundation that builds within yourself. Right. Can't touch this. Can't touch it. Can't touch this. Yeah. No. I am a sovereign being. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Your Camelot. Yeah. There you go. Solomon's temple. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I think I uh, was offering all these people here sitting, if anybody has a question. I have a question. Uh, if you want, come on yeah, over, over just so this camera picks up audio pretty good. So if you just. Um, uh, we're all here because we feel like we're being called to do something. And you've kind of told me the difference between us feeling like we need to do something and just being ourselves. Can you elaborate on kind of the difference for, for us who are trying to find what our path is and how it's not necessarily doing, it's how do we just be who we are supposed to be? Yeah, because people try to force a situation because we know we're, um, you know, collectively we all decided to incarnate together at this time because we've kind of injected ourselves into the matrix like a good virus, if you want to put it that way. So we're, we've come here to change it from the inside out. And uh, it was a very courageous thing to be stripped of everything and, and volunteer for this. Um, and it's a sense of responsibility. And so how, you know, we've got that sort of feeling that's latent deep inside of us and we kind of keep feeling, I'm, I know I'm here to do something, I know I'm here to do something. And, and we are, we're all here to do something. And uh, it's kind of like everything that you've had in your life so far, when you look back over your life, you, you'll come to know that that was grooming you for something. All the experiences, you're being prepared uh, back down through your timeline in a, in a, in a linear fashion. And uh, soon we're going to uh, metamorphosize and become more empowered from within. And so you don't actually have to work really hard and try and find out what your path is. You just got to continue just to be you and relax and allow it to come out, allow it to unfold. And, and it's not about forcing anything. And what, what it is that you're here to do will be known to you and it'll come naturally from within you. There's no one's here to tell anyone what to do because that, that much greater aspect of ourselves organized this life that we're having. And so, and that's a part of us that's one with the unfoldment of creation. It's one with God, that's one with you know, life and its natural unfoldment. And so that part of us is where all the wisdom, all the know-how of what to do, where to go and how to go about it, it's all contained in there. And it's just sitting there latent and it'll trigger for different times for different people. So for some people it may have happened a few years ago. Uh, for me, this is me doing my great work. And, uh, and I know I've got more responsibilities to come, so I've still got more activation to go and, 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 and move into those, those other roles as well. And for some people, they're just working away in their everyday life and, and they will just transform when the time comes. People who aren't on the so-called spiritual path at all, you know, single mums and people working in factories and just people just in the matrix, just living, living the, uh, you know, the everyday grind. And when the time comes, they will actually activate as well and they'll be playing a participatory role in this as well. So I say to people, just relax and allow yourself to be. Just be who you want to be from, from now on. Be authentic, because if you try to be anything else, you're not being real. You're living a lie yeah. in reality. So all you got to do is just be you, and by that, that's how you open up your channels and allow more of you to come through, and then more of that knowing and more of that power and more of that wisdom just starts emanating and you just you, you, you're more present you're more in that present moment as we say and 
you know, there's, there's, if you look at all these different philosophies, they all actually ticks all the boxes by allowing yourself to be authentic and to be you and allowing it just to emanate from within yourself. So how much, how much uh, work does a tree have to do to grow to be the perfect tree and complete its mission perfectly? <laughs> it just yeah. has to be. just has to be. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody else have a question? Yeah, if, if, now you say, I think you said everything starts at 26,000 years ago is where this, what's going on right now start, is that right? This 24, current cycle. 2480, yeah. somewhere's in there? Yeah. Okay, did we all, did everyone on the earth right now, I'm having a tough time because my wife just passed away about a year ago when, with, with uterine cancer. Yeah. And if she was still alive, she'd be here. That's, yeah. what, that's what makes us a tough, because I know yeah. she'd understand what you're saying. Okay. So, uh, 26,000 years ago, did all of us, at that time, get together at that time, and then some of us come to Earth sooner than others, is this what you're saying? Yeah, and we all got together on a much higher level and played a role in actually creating this cycle that we're in. So people have got different areas of life that, that they specialize in. And so some people were more involved in setting up the natural kingdom because, you know, the, the environment we're inside of helps facilitate the experiences we're gonna have. See, we were in a, um, if you look at our civilizations at the current mm. moment, it's a consumeristic way of life. But we also have a natural environment now that suits that. The natural environment is totally consumeristic. Everyone's eating everybody in order to survive. So right. it, it's a, it reflects, it, it provides, facilitates the energetic pattern so we can go inside that arena and have those experiences. So together from a much higher level, we all created this cycle together. And we're all here right at the end, right now, taking responsibility for that which we have created. But what I'm having a hard time with, why was she taken? Now, I, I, I assume by what you're saying is that everything was planned. She was planned that <clears throat> this is exactly what happened. And yeah. then we can't change anything from the day we're born. That's true. And then, and did this come, we came down through these levels. Was that in each levels we came down through that was already planned for each one of the levels that we can't even remember? That's right. Okay, why, why? Here's what's get really eating me up. She, I know she would. She, I don't understand why they would have. Why she would have planned on leaving at that time when I know she would be here in this, if if she was still alive. Have, have you got any kind of an answer for that? So I kind of. Well, the the only answer I can give you is that the life that that I'm having, is uh, of my making. No, you didn't create the life I'm having. My spirit created this life. My essence. So each life that we have. Um, uh, we're responsible for our own lives and what we do is we role play for one another so let's say if uh, my father passed away 10 years ago 11 years ago um, that provided a set of experiences for me or as someone um, like my sister I sat with my sister and, and had a discussion about this and she went through um, uh, an experience with cancer and uh, and she wasn't in a very open-minded state back then and said so you mean to say that all the misery and all the suffering I put my whole family through was of my making I said yeah and she got so upset with me that she she got really angry and stormed out of the room and um, because she just didn't get it you know this the each life that we're having is our own making our own responsibility and uh, you know I've had some really awful experiences in this lifetime and the only thing I could understand the only way I could understand it is to know that everyone's role-playing for everybody and so whatever if someone leaves us early, then the emotions that we go through and the feelings that we go through at that time was what we wanted. It is, it is um, you and your wife got together and, and pre-organized prior to your incarnation that at this point in time that she would leave before you did. Because I, my mother, you know, is uh, is about to turn 80 and she's been without dad now for the last uh, 11 years. So, you know, I've had these discussions with mum too to help, uh, help her go through it as well. So... Um, your, each of our individual circumstances as well is, is individual. So um, what emotional fields, what kind range of emotions, what experiences you had with your wife is totally between you and your wife. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's individual. So we're all, all having our individual experiences with it. I, I really don't have any more answers than that. So it was a stage. contract? Oh, yeah, it's preordained, okay. pre I'm trying to really pin this thing down because I'm yeah. having some other problems. If, if, uh, uh, if, if a person kills someone yeah. else, yeah. that was a contract between those two. Exactly. If someone rapes someone else, that's a contract. Yes. That's tough. 
That is, that's yeah. heavy stuff. Well, I can tell you I know what it feels like to be raped because it's happened to me. Okay, so I know what it's like. So, now, how would was that, I... Would, would we say that was in this life or another in life? In this life. So, how, how, how was I to deal with that? You know, how was I to deal with that? And it's happened on, on a few occasions, not just once. So, how am I to deal with that as a person? So, I've had to process this very deeply within myself. And I got to the point where I processed it so deeply and understood it so deeply that I could actually say to those beings that I love them. No matter what they do to me, I will always love them. Because down here in the lower domains of the universe, we are role playing for one another. There's a contract between you guys. Yeah. I mean, that makes, these guys, I was in the Patriot Movement for years and years and years, and then you come along and say there is no free will, and I just laugh because that's all the Patriot Movement talks about is free will, how we have free will. You come along and say they don't have daughters. There ain't no free will. Who created yeah. the life you're having? And, I, and most people, like you say, most people can't handle that in a sense, but you I can't. just love it. They can't because their egos can't cope with that because their egos want to be in control. Mm -hmm. And it helped me in a sense because I think back about things I should have done different with my wife, said something to them and different things, and I couldn't have. Should've, what you're would've, saying could've. is I couldn't have done exactly. a thing different. You, it was perfect. And that helps. The mm -hmm. whole thing was perfect, mate. The whole thing was perfect. Yeah. And I'll tell you, you, you came right at the right time because I was really having a tough time. And then when you came by and said, Everything, nothing could be changed. That really, Can't. really, really helped me. It's set. It's set. It's like uh, the life cycle that we're having, or even if you look at the processional cycle we're having, you hold up a DVD. It's a cycle. And when you hold up that DVD, isn't that whole movie in that DVD from start to finish? Said and done. Complete. So this part of us has come inside that movie, inside that life cycle, and this aspect of us is living the experience of it. Mm-hmm. And I like it. Uh, for me, I mean, that, it, my, my uh, journey evidently was to like that because I, I really uh, associate with that part of it. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, on one level, it's taking responsibility and people have a real problem with that. But once you do that, then people don't, you know, once you can get to that point, then it's totally freeing and liberating. You know, and so much weight just lifts off because you know the whole thing was by design. It was preordained. We're all role playing for one another. Therefore, you know, the judgment falls away, the hurt falls away, and then then all this gratitude appears, and you say thanks. You know, um, I'm grateful for the way my father treated me. You know, at times it was tough. He was tough on me, but um, you know, I'm grateful for it. You know, and those other beings that um, did whatever they did to me, um, both here on an earthly plane and up on on the ships. I'm grateful, as crazy as it sounds, because I wouldn't be the man I am today without those experiences. A lot of doors open so. up. A lot of doors open up when you learn that gratitude thing. Yeah. So, how do you find that level of compassion for somebody who perpetrates against you? Not just like on the earthly plane, but we got people in control of the government. We yeah. got people, you know, interdimensional beings controlling us. How do you get to that level of absolute compassion where you realize you needed this? Because I came to realise that through that absolute compassion, and maybe it's not as absolute as I would like it to be, but I'm a fair way down that track, um, that I knew when I was lying there and they were doing horrible things to me up in that ship, and I just turned and looked at them and I said, it doesn't matter what you do to me, I will always love you. That was the moment I came out of victimhood. That was the most powerful thing I ever said in my life. When you, can, when you can look a perpetrator in the face and say, it doesn't matter what you do to me, I will always love you. Now, you don't necessarily have to like what they're doing. That's a totally different level, right? Mm -hmm. Love and like are two different things, right? Mm -hmm. People mix the two together. You don't have to like people. You don't have to be their friend. You don't have to hang around them. It's best just to not be in their presence, you know? So that's a, but you still love them unconditionally, you know? So it's, it's important not to get those two paradigms mixed up together. Yeah, and that, to be able to, you know, and, and a great man once said, forgive them for they know not what they do. So on one level, they don't. They've got no idea what they're doing. They're totally, um, for, you know, under the control of these other energies, whether it's ego-driven or it's power-driven or desire-driven, um, or, the, or they're just a puppet to, to another energy beyond their control of that part of their being. And so in the process of being 
You know, society has basically put a bunch of programs on us to take us away from our actual being and who we are. What uh, advice can you give for us to help us kind of remove some of these programs that may be conscious or subconscious because we're just hit it with it repeatedly so much that we yeah. believe it through repetition? How do we break down these programs and reach that mm -hmm. level of being? Again, the way to do it is to start being authentic from your heart, being being you, who you truly are, and that energy emanates out and rewrites all those programs. It does, because then you're not then you're not being reactive. You're not being a wounded person. Um, so because I had a lot of, I used to carry around a lot of hurt and a lot of pain, and I used to play the blame game. Oh, yeah, you know, it's their fault. It's you know his fault or her fault or their fault you know they did this to me and all that sort of business and uh, the moment you can do that you are free from all that because um, you're, you're bringing this energy out from inside of you you can be you and you're not being someone with post-trauma do you know what I mean right. so you're not you're not living a reactive program to the experience you're actually coming from the heart and you become grateful for the experience and 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 the always whenever you have a negative experience in life the one thing to ask is how does this serve me that is the first thing to ask how if someone's challenging you in your life if you've got issues with people in your life right now the first thing to ask is how are these people serving me because ultimately that's what negativity and darkness does it serves us so the moment you can do that your whole approach to the situation changes and that's when gratitude comes in because you know they're serving you and they're actually doing you a favor in the greater greater scheme of life absolutely absolutely you know many people believe like if we pray to the universe or if mm -hmm. mass um, population of the people have um, changed their way of thinking then you know we can uh, avoid the disaster that's coming to the earth mm -hmm. But is, what's the disaster? There is no disaster that's coming. A dis people view it as a disaster. The, the, the perspective of, of, of it being a disaster is from beings of the lower paradigms of the universe. But for me, for this whole planet to totally implode, the whole crust to implode, and the birthing of this planet into a star, for me, is a wonderful thing. But for the people that want to hold on to the lower paradigms, the lower vibratory realms of life, for them, it's a disaster. It's the next stage, next stage in our evolution. Next stage in our evolution. Look, if you look around, it's a, it's a beautiful thing, right? It's magical. It's a paradise. Look at it. But then look deeper. Look behind the facade of the beauty, and you'll see that everything's killing everything. So the whole vibrational pattern of all that barbarianism going on all around us right now as we speak, I was walking through the forest the other day and the elemental kingdom was speaking to me and I said, look guys, you're still all killing each other. But you can't continue on like this. this. This era, this epoch, it's done, it's finished. You can't have people who are in love and light and enlightenment and all that walking around an environment that's completely barbaric. So this whole natural environment has to change. Yeah. And that's the pit, pit people are leaving out of the equation. They don't get that part. It's not a frequency match. You can't have that. You spoke last night about um, how we all feel something coming and how we shouldn't be caught in the individual vortex, whether it's a pole shift, whether mm. it's an economic collapse, whether it's a false flag alien invasion or whatever, but just to be prepared for something and just be aware mm. that something's coming rather than being worried about the specifics. I mean, what mindset should we go into it with, I guess? expecting well, something not a specific yeah just that something's coming not a specific thing uh, the economic collapse has already begun that's pretty obvious right now if you look across the the news and and everything um and whether it's comet Elenin or nibiru or fake a invasion or uh, a deity appearing a hologram whatever doesn't matter what it is maybe others we haven't even thought of yet you know but the main point is, if we can be prepared that there is events that will play out and they're going to want to use that to mind control the human population. So if we can be prepared for that, then we've got a heads up. If you can lighten it up and say, okay, we have a stash of popcorn in the cupboard. We always talk about getting the popcorn out to watch the show because it's going to be a global show and it's going to be fantastic. So that way you can, you know, it's more lighthearted and you can detach from it. It, it helps with the detachment process. 
if you look at it as though it's just a show and you don't get sucked in into those drama vortexes and then you don't get the mind control programs getting into your mind as though if you sit there like that and you're just staring at the screen mm. waiting for the next news bulletin what's happened next and you get in your car and you put the radio on you're hearing the reports there and then you're lying in bed at night and you're listening to the radio and you know people just get so sucked in and that's when all the energy waves and subliminals and everything just working on your mind and they just draw you into that paradigm so you know it's about okay that you keep it out there that's mm. the show it's out there and i'm going to sit here in my centered state in my authentic beingness and not allow myself to be drawn into that brainwashing paradigm that's taking place Right. But you hear like awful news every day about you know what's happening in London, and as long as it's offshore, you know you kind of detach yourself by just turning off the, the thing. Yeah. But if it starts happening where you live, then what would you do? Yeah. Well, that's that's, that's when I things go to a whole new level. So if you have like friends around you that are having an argument, are you going to allow yourself to get drawn into that argument? Or are you actually going to say, okay, that belongs to them, that's between those two, and you can remain detached. So we've already had those experiences in our lives, haven't we? So if you can draw on those experiences, you look back every time that someone's tried to draw you in to like an argument or, or whatever, then you have that ability to detach. So if things are happening all around you, if a religious deity turns up and, and uh, you've got members of the family who are religious zealots and they say, you have to come with us, you know, we want to save your soul, you know, our saviour is going to save your soul and all that, yeah. and they put the pressure on you, you know, then you have the power just to say, look, you know, I've got my own thing going on here. If, if that's the path you want to take, you're welcome to it, but that's not my path. If you think that I'm going to burn in hell because I don't follow your religious deity, then that's up to you. But that's not reality. What do you think the primary purpose of religions has been over the eons of time? Since it's not really healthy, it's different from spirituality is religion. Yeah. So where, okay, how, can, how would you differentiate between true spirituality and dogmatic religion? Well, true spirituality is about... Uh, uh, communicating with life and understanding life and interacting with life and and it's all about relationship with life whereas um, uh, religious dogma is about subservience and it's about um, losing one's identity and handing it over to some entity that's supposed to be more powerful and greater than you are and therefore you you actually it's uh, it, it's worship and you end up feeding you become a resource and you feed that that energy so it's too dope totally different states yeah. I see that I see the the religion side of it requiring an intermediate an intermediary you know you have to go through the church you have to go through the priests you have to go through yeah, the, the, the middleman whatever right uh, he, he's your he's your man. he's your hook up to the to the higher powers yeah, yeah. They, they like to brainwash that into you yeah the middle create man. that look reliability <laughs> yeah beware the middleman so what's the best way to re-empower ourselves? It's going to go back to it every time. Just continue to be you because your soul journey that you organize for your life, just live that, celebrate that, be that. And it's through that process because the part of you that created this life is up here, is one with God, is one with life, and is one with the unfoldment. So to, to just continue to live to, to be you. So your soul needs a certain set of experiences, therefore, um, to, uh, to uh, achieve a certain set of energetic patterns through those experiences and that energetic charge in your soul. Now I've had uh, a different journey in the universe to you. We've ended up in the same destination but we've had, you know, and sometimes we cross paths along the way. Um, but what I need now between now and the next couple of years is going to be different to what you need. So I've just got to continue to be me. You just need to continue to be you and those experiences between now and then will help you achieve perfect balance. Okay, George. Well, I want to thank you a lot. I actually let's give you an opportunity to uh, leave our uh, our viewers with uh, on the one on the last parting statement. Yeah. Well, don't let anyone tell you what to do, including me. And uh, continue to be authentic. And continue to be yourselves. Trust in yourselves. Uh, really start to trust in you, in your own. Uh, intuitive heart and your own subtle it's very subtle it's very deep and continue to trust that and wherever that takes you 
doesn't matter if it doesn't agree with things I say or, or Joe Blow says or whoever is, is on the speaker circuit says, you've got to live your life and be you because that is your relationship with God and wherever you need to go in the universe and wherever that takes you. So that's the thing that is sacred in life. And, uh, and don't forget how powerful you are. And know that nothing exists beyond you. Nothing. Nothing. You're infinite. And you always have been and you always will be. Well, thank you, George. And I want to thank everybody listening and watching. Uh, condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance. Love it. And we love you guys. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, 100th Monkey.